Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about Haas diagrams. So first, a partial order on a set has to satisfy three properties. It's got to be a relation that's reflexive, transitive, and anti-symmetric. So let's take a look at three examples so that we can understand what these terms mean and then we can also draw the Haas diagram to see what is so important about those diagrams. All right, so the first example I'm going to look at here is number one. So we're looking at the power set of the set AB. So I'm just going to write example one. Give ourselves a little bit of space. So we're looking at the power set. That's what that big capital P means. And it's the power set of AB. So the elements in here, I'm looking at the empty set. I'm looking at the little element A, the little element, uh, the set containing the little element B, and the set containing AB. So in other words, the power set of a set is just the, the set of all subsets. All right, so these are the four creatures, the four um, little sets that I'm thinking about. And the relation that I'm working with is subset containment. So I want to know for these sets that I've listed, which ones are subsets of the other ones. So for example, um, I could just think out loud here, you know, the empty set is a subset of of A, and the empty set is a subset of B, and the empty set is a subset of AB. And in fact, the empty set is a subset of itself. Okay, I could look at the set containing A. That's not a subset of the empty set, no, but it is, an, it is a subset of itself. I can write that down. Uh, the set containing A is not a subset of B, no, but it is a subset of the entire set. Okay, and similarly, I could go through for B. The set containing B is a subset of itself, and the set containing B is a subset of the entire set AB, and the set AB is a subset of itself. Ooh, that's a lot of writing, and we don't want to do that. <laughs> and that's why Haas diagrams are so helpful, because they help us visualize all the relationships and connections between the pieces um, without having to make these really tedious lists. But the reason I did it here is because I just wanted to talk a little bit about what these terms reflexive, transitive, and anti-symmetric really mean, um, because sometimes just reading a definition is a little bit harder to to you and for the meaning. All right, so first of all, reflexive. Recall, you know, when we've got a relation that's reflexive, it means that every element relates to itself. So x relates to x. Sometimes you'll see the notation x, twiddle x. Um, in this case, the relation is subset containment. So if I go through here, does every element relate to itself? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Every element relates to itself using this relation subset containment. Okay, goody. So we are working with a reflexive relation called subset containment. Very good. Now the next thing is transitive. So remember, uh, you know, back when we were talking about transitive relations, um, we said, you know, if X relates to Y and Y relates to Z, then that implies that X relates to Z. You know, I always think about this like a little frog, um, and the frog can transit from lily pad A, uh, lily pad X to a lily pad Y. And then if it can go from Y to Z, so my little creature, I'm a terrible drawer, but there's my insect, and he can hop, or she can hop from X to Y and Y to Z, well, then it's certainly the case that we could make our way from X to Z. We just have to make a pit stop at Y, but we can get there. Um, so that's the idea of transitive. We can transit ourselves around um, X to Y, Y to Z, therefore we can get from X to Z. All right, so let's check that this is transitive. So for example, um, 
if, let me use a different color here. So let's look at the empty set is a subset of A. And then A is a subset of AB. Is it true that the empty set is a subset of AB? Yes. Great. Um, and there's not much else to check here just because we're working in a pretty small set. So we're all set with transitive. And then the idea of anti-symmetric, I'm going to give ourselves a little bit of room here. And anti-symmetric says that if x relates to y and y relates to x, and then it better be true that x equals y. So there's, there's not a lot to check here for that. Um, we can look at some examples maybe in the course where this condition would fail. But, you know, the idea here is A is a subset of itself. And A is a subset of itself and A equals A. It's not very exciting to check, but, but it is anti-symmetric. Okay, moving on. Let's look at the Haas diagram to see how that will save us a lot of time and actually convey all these properties of being a partial order. So for example one, I'm going to put the subset containing AB at the very top. This is like the umbrella and all the little pieces are gonna lie under it. So uh, the subset A is contained in AB. So that's why I connected it and I put it underneath. Similarly, the subset B is contained in the big set AB. That's why I put it underneath. And the empty set is a subset of everybody. So I am going to connect to the subset A and I am going to connect to the subset B. That shows the subset containment there. Now I'm really tempted to just put another line all the way up there, but remember partial orders satisfy this idea of being transitive. So if I already have a line from the empty set to A and then A to AB, it's redundant to put this line up the middle. So I'm not going to clutter up my diagram with all these extra lines it's already conveyed in here that the empty set is a set of the big set by transitivity. All right, so that would be the Haas diagram for this set. Now, sometimes you'll see things like the meet uh, and the join. So somebody could say, um, hey, let's find the meet. And this is down below. That's how I remember that. And you can remember the meat down below because the little feet here are down on the ground. So if I asked you for the meat between the set containing A and the set containing B, you just have to go down. Down, 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 down we go. And where do they meet up in the diagram? Where do they collide down below? Well, the answer there is the empty set. Right? And we'll do another example with the join in a minute. Let's look at the next example, which is example two. And I won't go through all the subset or all the, it's not subsets, but it's divides. I'm not going to go through all the little pieces, but I will make the Haas diagram because it's it would be very uh, tedious to write down all the, the ways in which these numbers relate to each other. So for example two, I use a different color. Oops. So for example two, we are working with this vertical bar and this means divides. Don't tell me that this is a fraction. If I say three divides uh, six, this is a sentence. There's a subject, three is my subject. It's, there's a verb, it divides six. Don't tell me anything about fractions. I don't wanna know six over three. Six over three, that's a noun. I've given you a sentence with a subject and a verb. 
So this divides is a relation. It tells us about how things interact with each other. Our fractions, they belong in the set of rational numbers, which is not what we're doing right now. So we're going to get rid of the idea of fractions, and we're just thinking about, you know, how do things relate to each other? You know, like, how do people get along? Well, how do these numbers get along? Who's going to be friends with whom? Who's going to divide uh, whom? So the biggest number on my list, the one that's going to be divided by everybody else, is going to be my 12. And that's how I know to put the 12 up on top. And then I'm looking for the things that are one layer down, the things that don't have any divisors in between. So for example, 6 Six divides 12, so I can connect them. And there's there's nobody in between. It would be a bad idea to put a two here because, you know, two divides six and two divides four. So I know my two is going to be lower down in my list. So that's why I'm not putting a two or three up there yet. All right. So I'm kind of marching through my numbers. I've got the 12. I've got the six. You know, if you get stuck, you can go to the other end of the list and start feeding in the bottom numbers like one, And then you could list all your prime numbers like 2 and 3 because 2 is definitely not going to divide 3 and 3 is not going to divide 2. So I could put those in. And so now we just have to figure out where the 4 goes. All right, so let's see. 2 divides 6. That's good. 3 divides 6, that's good. Where does 4 go? Well, 2 divides 4, all right, so it needs to go up here somewhere. 3 does not divide 4, so I'm not going to connect those puppies. 2 does divide 4, those need to get connected. 4 does not divide 6, so 4 is not friendly with 6. Uh, and 4 does divide 12, so I am going to connect that. So there's my... Haas diagram. Now, it might be nicer if we redrew this so that we don't have all these crossing lines. So I see a better way to draw this if I do the 12 here and I go a 1, 2, 4, 12, and then 3, 6, you know, something like that is probably a better Haas diagram than the one with the crossing lines. Either way, um, let's look at an example here. Now, suppose I asked you for the join. The join is going to be up above, and the notation for a join is like a V. But again, if you look at the little feet of this, this individual, they're up on the top, so that's how I know I, I'm going up. So, for example, if I looked at the join of 2 and 3, Looking in my diagram, okay, here's my two and here's my three, and where do they meet up? Or where do they join up, I guess is a better way of asking that. Where do they join up? And that would be the six. 